Hi, uh, this is Janet, and uh, I'm Tony, and I'd like to start this talk with uh, uh, Taipei Times uh, headline, Prosecutors Raid Bureau Over Fluoro, and um, investigators yesterday raided the Bureau of Animal and Plant Health Inspection and Quarantine, and seized a number of documents as the government continued to field criticism over its handling of a bird flu outbreak. So basically they've um, uh, concealed this for at least two years. They've actually known that there was uh, um, H5N2 uh, and um, they've had secret meetings and um, and the experts actually uh, signed the documents knowing that this was um, a problem. They didn't report to the international, um, it's called IOEA. So that's what was, that was what actually resulted in um, the official, the head of this uh, committee uh, stepping down. And just in this article, it's talking about how there were there was um, an international journalist in December that had reported it, and then actually the Tainan government reported it on February 8th. So this new outbreak, what they're just basically saying in here is that even though you know these people reported it, they didn't say anything, and if it was reported by the government on February 8th, and then you know, it's been three weeks and nobody's said or done anything about it. It's a little bit um, scary. What they're saying is that actually H, uh, H5N2 doesn't affect people. Um, they don't, you know, have any repercussions from it. But regardless, I think the public needs to know that and make their own decision. Well, actually, before the election in uh, this year yeah. and just Two months prior to that, uh, I've already actually watched the independent uh, film. Okay. And there was this uh, journalist, I would say, uh, his name is uh, Li, okay. Okay. Li Huiren. And uh, he actually went into details, actually interviewing the government officials that actually one of them stepped down. Uh, from the B uh, BAPHIC, B A P H I Q, which is uh, the short uh, for the Bureau of Animal and Plant Health Inspection and Quarantine, um, but they are actually trying to um, uh, make the higher-ranking official step down from uh, its. I think it's the Bureau of Agriculture. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so this didn't really come as a surprise for me uh, be, be because I know for political reasons they didn't expose this because um, Chen Shui-bian was actually part of the scandal, but uh, mind Joe's gov uh, government didn't really uh, deal with it either for the election. So um, it's pretty sad that for the election, they actually sacrifice uh, a lot of the farmers um, at the farmers' expense, and a lot of them actually uh, uh, actually lost a lot of uh, income from the chicken dying, mm -hmm. and they, they might this might be spreading at the same time if they actually uh, stop this and then they report it as two years ago and then this we probably wouldn't have this epi epidemic right cuz i mean there were like a lot i forget how many it said were had to be like you know put there down were, like more than like 60,000 yeah something like that that's a lot Chickens, of yeah. that's a lot of loss of income right um, and the, for farmers. Actually, i saw i saw one of the male um Farmer actually was just stopping, stopping himself from crying, you know, and he was gonna have a breakdown. He said, 
and um, and then one of the female farmers were just crying like I've had I've had so much loss and I didn't know this and um, actually one of the um, farmers uh, asked the um, I think it was Xu uh, Tianlai I think that whether he knew about it or not and he just said well we're not gonna expose this because the whole industry is gonna be affected so he was trying to evade a little bit of the facts and left and this farmer was actually interviewed by one of the media mm -hmm. well I mean yeah if the government did this you know um, here they are talking about like this debate over rectopamine, whether we should have that or not, but at the same time they're allowing, you know, um, birds with, you know, H5N2 to just be there and not tell anybody about it. So um, it's really bad for Taiwan, it's really bad for farmers, and if it's true, um, it doesn't make, you know, Taiwanese people look good in the international, um, what was that, OIE. Right. Well, the 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 f well. Besides, uh, let's put about just like uh, the animal rights uh, aside, just for a little bit, because um, you know all these animals are being fed, you know, hormones, and they live in pretty bad conditions, like cages, and you know, with very small spaces, and so. Let's just put this aside for for a while. We just have to look at how uh, the government is just not facing the truth. And that itself shows how inefficient our government is and how political our government is. And then and then in the end people's health, animals' rights and then the whole economy actually would suffer from just not facing the truth. Right. And I mean, it even said in this article that the DPP was saying, like, you know, Mang Zhou has had a really bad record um, with dealing with this type of situation, like mad cow disease, bird flu, um, when he was a Taipei mayor with, you know, mad cow disease. Or no, I'm sorry, it was avian flu. Um, right. They're just, you know, a bunch of. Uh, different things that he's just, you know, having a problem dealing with. And if he can't be accountable, you know, to people that live in his own country that, you know, would maybe vote, have voted for him before, but now why would they? Because, the, you know, his government is concealing this. A lot of the experts are actually saying uh, Ma is um, uh, not putting the emphasis on uh, the agricultural developments instead uh, investing in more of a uh, like the big enterprises that actually are like the DRAM are actually suffering from um, not getting the orders because uh, we're always uh, manufacturing for people not having our own brands so we also suffer a lot from the euro debt so that's also, or I think our country is having a dilemma uh, dealing with uh, what industries we want to support and they probably want to choose the, you know, easier targets to sacrifice. Um, uh, I think sometimes you just have, really have to let go to actually in order to, to gain. Like now people really don't have confidence in our government and that really itself is creating this visual circle yeah i mean i guess the other thing too is that for example in canada we're kind of an agricultural nation so it's easy for us to say okay focus on agriculture because canada is so big there's so much country and there's so many people that have farms that that's really easy for us but taiwan's got both so it's kind of hard to know you know which direction to turn in but Hopefully, you know, this has happened so soon after the re-election. Hopefully this thing will still stay in people's minds for a couple of years when, you know, they go back to vote again. We don't have much time. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, mean, I forgot about 2012. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Bye.